This lesson will cover the following topics. Rebuilding the lower engine components. Rebuilding the upper engine components. First, let's look at the precautions to be taken when fitting the lip seals. Engines are now sealed by two types of lip seals which are not interchangeable. The elastomer type lip seal is fitted with a spring to hold it in contact with the shaft and a lip in the shape of a V which has a surface treatment. The thermoplastic PTFE lip seal, polytetrafluoroethylene, with a Teflon base. The surface contact area of the thermoplastic PTFE lip seal on the shaft requires no surface treatment, contrary to the elastomer seal. The absence of a spring limits the force of the seal against the shaft. The Teflon provides a low resistance to friction. In all cases, refer to the technical documentation to find out about the precautions to be followed when fitting the lip seals. Now let's look at rebuilding the engine. First, let's look at the cylinder block. Rebuilding the cylinder block consists notably of fitting the crankshaft, the connecting rods and the pistons, and the balancer shafts if the engine is equipped with them, the oil pump, and lastly the cylinder block sump. Before refitting a piston into the cylinder, you must first fit the piston rings. The piston rings are fitted in the following order. First the oil scraper piston ring. Then the sealing ring. And lastly, the fire protection ring. These three piston rings must be fitted using a special tool. The piston ring gaps must be fitted at 120 degrees to each other in order to ensure the sealing during the compression and piston power stroke phases. Before refitting the connecting rods to the pistons, you must fit the bearing shells. Fitting the upper and lower bearing shells is done using special tooling. You must then fit each connecting rod into each piston and fit the piston gudgeon pin. Click on the gudgeon pin to refit it. The gudgeon pin is free fitted. In this case, the movement is stopped by two rings or secured inside the connecting rod. You must refer to the technical documentation to find out about the special procedures involved. When refitting the pistons into the cylinders, you must compress the piston rings using a special tool. The cylinder must be lubricated with new engine oil. You can use a mallet to help fit the pistons in place. To avoid damaging the surfaces of the cylinders or the crankshaft crank pins, you must protect the end of the connecting rod with a rubber material. You must then refit the connecting caps to the crankshaft. Lastly, let's look at refitting the balancer shafts. You must measure the tooth clearance and determine the thickness of the new clearance adjustment shims to be fitted. Lastly, you must refit the oil pump and the sump by tightening in the sequence as recommended in the technical documentation. In this section, we covered the following points. Rebuilding the cylinder block consists principally of fitting the crankshaft, the connecting rods and pistons, and the cylinder block sump. Before refitting a piston into the cylinder, you must fit the fire protection piston ring, the sealing ring, and the oil scraper ring. Fitting the bearing shells is done using special tooling. You must then fit each connecting rod into each piston and fit the piston gudgeon pin. When refitting the pistons into the cylinders, you must compress the piston rings using a special tool. To refit the balancer shafts, you must measure the tooth clearance and determine the thickness of the new clearance adjustment shims to be fitted. Now let's look at rebuilding the cylinder head. The first stage consists of fitting the valves. All new or used valves must first be ground to provide perfect sealing to the seat. 
you must lubricate the valve guide. Apply grinding paste to the valve seat and turn the valve on itself using a special tool. If the grinding is correct, a regular grey mark can be seen on the valve head and its seat. The valves must be fitted in the locations where they have been ground. You must always check that each valve is marked in relation to its position on the cylinder head and that there are no large traces of carbon on any of the components to be refitted. You must fit the following components using special tooling. The valve guide, the valve stem seal, the return spring, the cup, and the collets. Now let's look at refitting the cylinder head gasket. Before refitting the cylinder head gasket, you must first measure the maximum protrusion for all the pistons using a special tool. You must then measure the thickness of the removed cylinder head gasket. For certain engines, you must also measure the height of the gudgeon pin to determine the thickness of the cylinder head gasket to be refitted. In all cases, you must always refer to the technical documentation to find out about the special refitting procedures for each engine type. Lastly, let's look at refitting the cylinder head to the cylinder block. The cylinder head gasket is fitted with the markings facing upwards. Set the pistons at the stroke halfway position. In certain cases, a locating guide tool is fitted to the cylinder block to assist with fitting. The cylinder head can then be refitted. Refitting the cylinder head is completed by tightening all of the bolts in sequence to a set tightening torque to ensure a perfect seal. The tightening procedure is usually carried out by starting with the center cylinder head bolts and by working towards the outer bolts. You must refer to the technical documentation to find out the tightening sequences and the torque tightening values. The cylinder head bolt tightening is usually given as a tightening torque and an angle tightening. It is essential that a torque wrench is used to apply the correct tightening torques. A socket wrench and an angle extension piece must be used to apply the angular tightening. In this section we covered the following points. All new or used valves must first be ground to provide perfect sealing to its seat. Each valve must be marked in relation to its position on the cylinder head. To determine the thickness of the cylinder head gasket to be refitted, you must first measure the maximum protrusion for all of the pistons using a special tool. The cylinder head gasket is fitted with the markings facing upwards. Set the pistons at the stroke halfway position. Refitting the cylinder head is completed by tightening all of the bolts in sequence to a set tightening torque to ensure a perfect seal. The cylinder head bolt tightening is usually given as a tightening torque and as an angle tightening.